Yes, today we are all about the matter of the heart. Affection, attraction, emotion, love, and more. It's believed that these are the feelings leading to marriage. So we ask, in a polygamous marriage, are these feelings present? <laughs> Very good pers perspective there, John. Well, a lot of people tell you that um, some people say love is all there is to it. Some people say, for God's sake, forget love, Joe. Uh, okay. <laughs> and so um, as we take a look at polygamy, we will be looking at all of that and um, trying to find out who does it really benefit. Mm. Yeah. Well, for better understanding, we have on the show today two gurus on this matter. Dayo Adeyemi, who kicks off with the conversation, and Isyama Lawal, our second guest. Okay, <laughs> and um, before we go into it proper. Yes. Uh -huh. We haven't seen in like seven days since the last time we were here. That's right, Helen. How are you? And doing? I've missed you. How are you, John? I've missed you too. <laughs> and how are you, John? I'm doing good, Helen. What, what kept you awake? What kept week? me awake during the week? I was looking forward to the holiday. Tomorrow being Workers' Day. Mm. 1st of May. And then, you know, now we have a double whammy. Mm. There is the Workers' Day holiday and there is also the uh, Muslim holiday. Okay. Coming yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, yes, that kept me excited, mm. excited. looking forward uh, Looking forward to what's happening. I wonder if the workers are looking forward to any special day this uh, year. Well, they usually would at least look forward to the holiday. But you see, one other thing that also kept me uh, thinking is the topic for today. Yes. Polygamy. So and you know what, Helen? The, uh, the song by John Legend... All of you, all of me loves all of you. So I wonder, is he speaking as a polygamist or as a one man, one wife person? Because if he says all of me, me loves all, all of you. you, is it all of you as one person or all of you as two, three, four? All of you five, as, as, a society, as a group. As a society. No, 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 as a group of wives. As a group of wives. <laughs> so well anyway yeah, that's... But from, from you know from that um, introduction that mm. um, a certain number of um, countries yes you know accept or are um, polygamous in nature there's a lot mm. of polygamy and they believe in it I, I saw a couple of um, videos reports on mm. uh, BBC Voice of Africa yesterday and so many families who have gone into it so one man with as many as okay fella Fela, I don't know anybody who's beat the record of Fela yet. Has anybody beat Fela's record yet? Of 27. Of 27 wives. No. 27 as in wives, so. Mm. Minus the concubines. Minus. <laughs> you know. Um, not, not to my knowledge. And so I'm beginning to wonder about the capacity of a man who is able to handle the intricacies of marriage and humanity in the female gender when there is a situation of one man plus more than one woman. Hmm. I'm wondering more <laughs> that what happens, how deep is your love when you have several spouses? And can you share love, really? Can and you can love you really share? One person? Can you love more than one person? Jesus. <laughs> anyway, that, that's, uh, that's what has kept me, okay. in, like you asked. All that's right. what has kept me thinking. Okay, so remember our romance today is with polygamy. But before we set off on this conversation proper, let's see a report that the producer has put together on this very interesting subject, yeah. polygamy. Okay. The number of words that the late Alafia had, it's rather hard to hundred. It's, it's just, to, and, and, I mean, the, the thing is, the whole thing is about a man for every woman. So there is, I don't think there is a big deal in African culture to have more than one wife. Yes, the, 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 the colonialists brought uh, one man, one wife. But then, which one is better? Taking them off the, off, off the shelves and then um, having more than one wife. It's always really healthy. Better than having a mistress. 
where your 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 children would not know their sibling from another mother until you die. Yeah, Islam allows you to marry four wives. There are conditions. But when you come to look at it, these conditions are not well, the God, God, I mean, the, 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 the Quran wants you to marry. You can marry as many as four. No, you have these days some Muslim, in some, some, some Muslim settings, you have those who have harems of more than four wives. But having four wives too is predicated on the fact that one, you must be able to, to maintain equity among them. It's not possible. Can you maintain equity among four women from different sources? You have four children, you cannot maintain equity among them. So sometimes I think uh, the, our interpretation of all these um, biblical or Quranic injunctions is usually done to suit our own taste. That a man married, for, a Muslim man married four wives does not preclude him from having a side chick. After, after all, Solomon had many wives and he still had his side chicks. The social media has made a lot of human beings interlopers in matters that hardly concerns them, matters they hardly know anything about. Somebody just say he picks a wife. I mean, we pretend a lot on the social media. And even in, in, in any public, pub, public, public view, we make so much nice. Somebody decides to have more than one wife. So what whose business is it? As long as the women are not complaining, as long as he is not marrying a minor. Many of us will pretend a lot. We pretend that, okay, because I married my wife in church. Well, I remember when, when I was getting married, my wife was informed that, remember, is entitled to more wives. Can you cope with this? She said, yes. If I decide not to marry, that's my taste. If I decide to have more, I don't think anybody will come and, should come and start uh, pontificating to me. Our personal relationships should be kept off the social media. If somebody decides not to, I mean, start. Okay, that's all. That's his own point of view. Um, wow. <laughs> an expert there talking about polygamy. And, is uh, he an expert in polygamy? Yeah, expert and <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> you know, yeah, the funny bit he, is that he talked about taking them off the shelves. Mm, I wonder what that means. Okay, and he also talked about equity. Yes. Is it really possible for you to go in and say, look, mm. I'm fair? It's, it's not to possible. three, to four, to five, well, to ten. Well, anyway, I am I'm, sure that, I'm sure that our, our guests mm. today will help us okay. out. All right. You know. Okay. okay, so once again, remember that the topic for today is polygamy. And to set up the conversation is our first guest, who is ready to go, Dayo Adeyemi. He's the founder of Catalyst Men Network International here in Lagos, a global men's coach. He's also a professional counselor, he's a healing therapist and behavioral change specialist. He's married to one wife and blessed with children. And um, hello there. Thank you for being a part of the show today. Hello, Mr. Mr. Dyer. Ademi, can you hear us? Hello, Mr. Ademi, can you hear us? Hello. Okay. Okay. Mr. Hello. Mr. Ademi, you are welcome. Hello. We can hear you. You are welcome, Mr. Ademi. Hello. Mr. Ademi, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Confirm Hello? that you. Confirm that you can hear us, please. Hello. We okay, seem, we, we will, we will, we will have to come back yeah, to. We seem to be having some. I can hear you now. Can you hear ah, me? Excellent. Beautiful, Thank you. beautiful, <laughs> Mr. Deemi. So, of course, uh, let's quickly move on because we've lost a bit of time. Uh, yes, you know the topic is on uh, polygamy. And we want you to help us unravel a few things. But let's start from the beginning, like they always say. Now, polygamy has been with us for so long. And we all just simply assume that we know it. We know it very well. Could you please help us? Tell us, so what really is polygamy? Okay. Uh, simply described, polygamy is having more than one spouse. And so it's not defined whether a man has more than one wife or not. But it's having more than one spouse. So a woman can decide to have more than one husband. It's polygamy. Okay. And vice versa. The other thing is polygyny. Okay. Where a man has multiple wives. Or specifically polyandry. Where a woman has 
uh, where women have co-husbands. And it happened recently in Nigeria, whereby twins, two boys, two guys, married a single wife. Okay. Um, mm. Ellen, the other time you were asking that did anybody beat the last record? Yes. yes. Someone, someone did. The man from Niger State has about 99 wives. Whoa. For a pastor. <laughs> yeah, there's a specialist in Niger State who had 99 wives. Can't live in wives. Not, not, <laughs> it's not a social media story. 99 wives alive <laughs> before he passed on at the age of uh, almost 100 plus. I hope in that's rec Western... it's recorded in nah. the Guinness Book of Records. Yeah, I hope so too. We have so many kids. <laughs> um, in the in the Western world, it's called plural wives. And the Mormons, the Church of Latter Day Saints, practice what they call plural wives. They were legally have the right to marry more than one wife. Hmm. In the UK, there is what we call trophy wives, whereby somebody, a man in the city, goes back to the village to go and marry and retain the wife. In the it's village. called trophy wives. So, trophy wife has taken a new meaning now, whereby the man becomes very rich, marries a younger wife. And originally, it is the people in the UK city who has one wife, and because the Church of England forbids polygamy, they will go back to the village, marry, and keep a trophy wife. So, the issue of polygamy and the definition, mm. honestly, is very. Mm. Coming okay. back to contemporary world, I want to tell you that as a practitioner in the men's world, as a, an expert who runs men's network, mm. there is what we call multiple partners syndrome. You may not legally be married to another woman. For some, there are three, four, five women in your lifetime. Extra wives, side chicks, mm. you know, mm. wives compete. It may not be done openly because of the economy, because of this. But even in this part of the world, despite Christianity and Islam, uh, we still have the issue of multiple partners. Okay. And I think it's both ways. Okay. Women also keep multiple partners despite having one husband. So okay. the hypocrisy is on. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> okay. Okay, but this is not the area for where we, the women are championing. You know, the women equality thing. Um, the margin is 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 totally almost non-existent, if I can use that word. When you compare the ratio of men having more wives, you know, against women having more husbands. Uh, the other way, the other one sounds so abnormal, but we'll get to that later. Um, sometimes you, you read from the internet and they tell you about the population of men to women. And so it becomes like wicked for us to insist that there must be one man and one wife. What happens to the rest of the women? That's another, another angle to look at it. So but being married to one spouse is quite a mouthful. Lately, we hear so many disturbing scenarios and stories coming out of marriages, love turning sour, and so many bad things happening to either party. So I'm asking, why would anyone, you know, with the challenge and the trouble of one man, one wife, why would anyone want to even add more wahala to his... Uh, Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for that question. From the numbers of domestic violence that we've had, how many is coming from polygamous who? Hmm. Let's be honest with ourselves. Valley, do you hear polygamous who are stealing their husband? Hmm. Is this single one man, one wife? Where death, violence, battery? Of course. Let me also please quickly tell uh, our brother that to say, oh, can you love more than one man at the same time or equally? The questions I've always asked is this. At every point in time, sir, or man, you have always loved more than one person. You've always loved your wife, your mom, your parents, your kids, one way or the other. Equally? Equ different, we are saying, different relationships. Good. Different relationships. So, but because it comes to intimate partners, mm -hmm. because it comes to what we call the intensity of relationship, we try to stimulate that love and say, oh, one man, one love, one wife, one wife, one love, one man. 
it's, it looks more because of the intensity, but you've always stopped more than one person at a time. What we are saying is it for the sake of for the sake of equitable living, let's have one man, one wife. But like the Bible say, in the beginning it was not so. Mm. Let me also tell you this. Polygamy has nothing to do with Christianity. Nothing at all to do with Christianity. The reason is simple. When Christianity started, it was after the birth of Jesus or after the death of Jesus. There was no Christianity when he was alive. So every historical record and leading to polygamy has nothing to do with Christianity. Okay. They are just historical stories to highlight more of what happened pre Jesus time. Okay. After Jesus, he said, You don't have to be not true. Okay. Now, coming back to contemporary time, there is what we call globalization. There is what we call economic action. There is what we call the intermixing of cultures, whereby we know what's going on in the Western world. We understand the economy is hard. We understand there are some aspects of their culture that is very good, the way they dress, the way they organize their banking system. If it's okay for us, oh, let us go ahead and be shown to be part of what is good about the Western culture. Mm -hmm. We are not traditional people like a lot of Integration. Okay, now, even given all of that, you know, uh, e economy, culture, and all of that, globalization, it is still a matter of choice for one to be polygamous or not. Now, when does it become illegal in this country, Nigeria? Mr. Are you there? Yes. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here to you clearly. Uh, did, you, did you get the last question? When does it become illegal yeah. to be in polygamous in Nigeria? Please come again. When does it become illegal to be polygamous in the Nigerian context? <laughs> Okay, when does it become illegal? Yes. Uh, who makes it illegal? Because we are told that in court, at the registry, That's the only we one are only right, allowed recognized. one wife. Okay. So it, it means that generally... One nation. Yes. Hello, sir. Okay, sir. We have one nation and multiple countries. <laughs> the laws that play out in the northern Nigeria... Okay. It's not the same as the one that plays out in southern Nigeria. Okay. I am not a lawyer, but even in the southern Nigeria, there are several ways you can marry. Customary marriage, mm -hmm. what you call the church marriage or the legal marriage, mm -hmm. what you call cohabitation. Mm -hmm. Under the laws in the western Nigeria, if you cohabit with a woman in child or no child, for more than one year, she is legally your wife. Please mm -hmm. check out the law. Mm -hmm. If the woman gives you, and after 12 months, she gives back to a baby, and you are cohabited, you see your wife under the law. Mm -hmm. So, when we are talking about is it acceptable, is it legally acceptable, yes. you see one House of Rep member who went to the uh, chamber, the chamber to go and display six wives. He should have been arrested if it's illegal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, mm. he married according to customer rights and according to Islamic rights. Mm. But if you marry according to the uh, civil code, the legal code, yes, mm. you assume that she death do us part. Mm. Okay. So, in the northern Nigeria, it's not illegal. In the southern Nigeria, it is legal and illegal, depending <laughs> on the kind of marriage. <laughs> Certificate okay, that you vote. Okay. okay. Wow. All right. So really, we can't say that it's illegal. Mm, there are okay. options. Mm. There are options. To <laughs> <it>. <laughs> right. Okay. So so so, but just um, looking at um, our culture and the practice um, that obtains here in Nigeria, we seem to be having some conflicts with the position of faith, of religion. You know, culture, faith, and religion seem to be clashing when you talk about polygamy. Can you um, expand more on this for us? Okay. Okay, culture, faith, and religion. Yes. 
please let's just collapse it to two okay culture and religion, religion. Okay. let's also situate this with the contemporary culture hmm. well with you well with you sir let's also situate this with the contemporary culture and the traditional culture that we have now Culture in Nigeria is not against polygamy to a polygamous situation, polygamous marriage. It's not. Mm. But contemporary, and because of development, without looking at, oh, my wife has married, sorry, my neighbor has married one wife. Oh, I cannot get it up the next one year. Life is so tough. We have seen the implication. We have seen the implications of polygamy, for example. Uh, uh, whereby sibling rivalry, people jealous of each other, you can't train your kids, so many of the negative impacts. So everybody starts to key in to what makes life easier for all of us. At least on the surface by, uh, by value, monogamy looks very good. Mm. But it does not guarantee peace of mind. It does not guarantee mm. prosperity. Yeah. Marriage is not a ticket to love because there are so many people who are married and they are not in law, co tenants. Yes. But for the sake of the church, for the sake of society, for the sake of contemporary and education and economy, hmm. let's make it one man, one, one wife. wife. My whole position is this whatever works for you, go for it. Not what makes you happy. Hmm. Whatever works for you. Whatever what works for you. So it, it's like uh, you have a, an open check. Not what makes you buy. happy. <laughs> Whatever works for yeah, you. Yeah, what makes you happy now may not make you happy later. Mm. Because you have an extra baggage of a wife or a husband, yes. and then children come into it. When the responsibility of taking care of them comes to you face to face, your happiness will disappear fast. Wow. Mm. And you will now discover, wow, I shouldn't have done this. But yeah. if it works for you, fine. Happy, sad, sorrowful, elated, it works for you. Okay, okay, Mr. Demi. Now, uh, I think this whole discussion is even holding because there's another word, you know, that uh, actually uh, is a running mate it's, with it's polygamy, which constantly. is adultery. Mm. You know, some Nigerians recently I even quoted as saying that polygamy is not adultery. So, how do we defend that if we have to? No, polygamy is not adultery. It's not infidelity. It is legally bringing in wives in. So it has legal backing. It's a legal backing to adultery. Okay. Hello? We lost him again. Oh. Hello, are you? Can you hear us? We, we have a few more minutes with you. Can you still hear us? Okay, okay so. Well, while we try to get Mr. D, and I would have really wanted him to answer that question. Mm. Because now what he's saying is that it's not adultery, right? It's not fornication. That it's you not have, infidelity. It's not infidelity. Yeah. That you have legal backing. Mm. Mm. Okay. okay. Mr. D, are you back with us? Yes, yes I am. Yes, I was saying that, you know, some people are saying polygamy, polygamy is not adultery. Yes, I hear you. Could, could you defend that? It is not, because you can legally bring in the wife. And I was sharing the experience with you that my own mom is the third wife. Okay. We tell my mom, be the third wife, I will be on this program today. <laughs> okay. That is the truth about it. Okay. And where I come from, that part of where I come from, in the earlier days, you can actually bring your concubine to your wife and say, this is my concubine. Okay. And all of them, they are cool with it. Oh. So, infidelity, cheating, adultery is situated within the religion that we find ourselves. Hmm. Mostly Muslim and Christianity. Christianity. The traditional religions don't see that way. Hmm. It's part of the game of life. Okay. And don't forget that most of us have been culturally shaped by Christianity and by Islam. Wow. Ah, and, and, you know, that, 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 as you were saying it, my, I was remembering that um, in the olden days I hear that uh, the wives, the wives at home would uh, run into a pretty girl somewhere in the marketplace 
and go home and say to their husband, we found someone that you should be interested in. And they help to get yeah. a new wife home, right? Yes. yes. I, I wish yes. you could yes. go back to those, yeah. to those days. Hello, Such sir. generosity. Hello, sir. Yes, go there ahead, sir. There is a particular community that my immediate senior sister married into in Kogi State, a Yoruba community. The wife will marry another wife for the husband. Pay the dowry. Wow. And so, the, the original wife of the man owns the wife and the children that she gives birth, he gives birth to for him. It is the wife, the first wife that will source for that younger girl, marry legally and then hand over to the husband. A Yoruba lad here. So if you, if you read expansively, if you travel expansively, some of the things we are saying, they are still happening, but because of the changing cultural patterns and westernization and globalization, mm. we are changing it. Mm. It has only been part of us. Mm. So really, I think at the end of the day, we should, I mean, we should stop worrying ourselves about the fallout of uh, polygamy or what really... Po because really, the actors will define what happens, how they want it, mm. okay? Mm. What business do we as outsiders have? You know, regarding uh, how it is set up and all of that. Yeah, it's legal. It's so, do, legal. do you think we should just we should just leave them alone? Let me should, let me let me tell you something happened in the social media. Julie Doche came up. He said, "Oh, he has an extra wife," and then his son. And everybody started talking. Uh -huh. <laughs> and interestingly, my network, the Catalyst Men Network International, belongs to Lagos Women 2030, and that conversation came up whereby. 98% of the members are mm. women, mm. activists, advocates, mm. human rights fighters who are women. So the issue came up. And the most position I share with most men, most women don't agree with me. I said, you lay no is an adult. Mm. The other lady involved is an adult. Mm. So yeah. if two adults decide to do it, who are you to define it as adult? Mm. They have a right to choice. They have a right to life. They have a right to what they want to do. Mm. It is wrong of you to now bring your second wife to my home and say, come and feed you, come and feed her, or your children. Mm. So if you can handle her, if it's your headache, it's your headache, it's not mine. <laughs> yes. So, adults, look, let's, let's, let's be honest. Please, give any, I have, I have four children to the glory of God, they're about 18. Mm. I tell them, I can only give you directions about life. I can't make your decisions for you. Mm. I'll be a bad father if I keep making decisions for you at 18. But this is direction. If you choose as my son, my daughter, to have married more than one, it's your decision. Live with it. Absolutely. But I've given you life, I've given you that. Choose what you want to have. Absolutely. Okay. As we get ready to say thank you for being with us on this segment, um, if polygamy is none of anybody's business, why is polya polyandry. polyandry less fashionable here in Nigeria? I mean, why polyandry. would anybody yeah. frown at a woman having more than one husband, for example? Okay, but we we are actually also not frowning about about of a woman having more than one uh, husband. We are also frowning about a woman, a housewife specifically, also having extramarital affairs. Oh, Let why? me tell you, women wives are not biologically wired <laughs> to be able to handle polyandry, but yeah. they are emotionally powerful to handle it. Hmm. <laughs> women, now you say, uh, it's not everybody talking about polygamy. We are not talking about women who have, out of four children, three belong to another man in the same marriage. Hmm. Sorry, let, let's be honest with ourselves. Is that not she has emotion and she can keep those children for 25 years, 28 years? The guy will not know emotional resilience of adults, vice versa. Happens also Very with it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could add it to Lagos <laughs> and have this argument. Because it's very expected. debatable. But yes. what we are saying is that polyandry, honestly, biologically, culturally, religiously, economically, does not pay. Because when you look at it, is the man going to pick the bills of all the guys? Mm. Is she going to pick the bills? Even the Western world that we are copying, men still pick the bill, despite the independence of the woman. Yes. Well, so. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, sorry. No, they, they Do I completely parallel. agree they with you this, on this? Do I <laughs> totally agree with you? Mm. No, you don't have to. But please <laughs> let me tell you, when you get to legal aspect of the Western Union, where you are union of marriage, mm. when a man has come from his woman in the Western world, he pays alimony, he pays child support heavily. Mm. 
what you refuse to pay by being responsible, you pay through the court. Okay. So eventually, the master takes her of the woman. You can't escape. So if the woman is ready for polyandry, let me say about Billy because my wife is out of the ashes. <laughs> I can see this. I can't take care of <laughs> and the beast of all the guys involved. I'll be glad. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Mr. Mr. Davy, Mr. Daya Davy, I think this table that you are shaking, uh, we cannot completely shake it today. At all. We will we will we I mean certainly we've we've been able to deal with the subject dispassionately, you know with your professional input and all of that. And we really must say that we appreciate what you have done for us today. But the conversation continues. It does. You know, it does. we're going to have to get you back again. Let's uh, maybe this time bring you into the studio. Oh, so yes, we can so see, so I can eyeball, see your eyes. Eyeball to eyeball. To eyeball. eyeball. Yes. And uh, <laughs> talk about this uh, very interesting topic, uh, polygamy. Right. Okay. okay. Th thank you so thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, let me also state this publicly. In case you are a man there, you want to exit multiple relationships, please talk to the producer, they will reach me. Because it can be complex, it can be complicated, you can feel like you are in love, yeah. and then it does from you that I need to exit this, you don't know right. the way. Mm -hmm. Talk to the producers on Plus TV, mm -hmm. we will help you with wisdom and strategies to exit peacefully. Thank if you so you much. Have to Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, you too. Mr. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, at least now I know that the pocket aspect, the financial aspect, the fact that the man is the one who, you know, picks the bill at both ends, uh, that, one's, that is one reason. And the second reason is that the woman is not biologically wired, wired. Yes. to handle <laughs> her. Okay, now. That's a matter for another day. All right. The, this is today with John and Helen. And on behalf of both the men and the women who have benefited immensely from your insight, once again, I'd like to say thank you for finding time to be a part of the show today. Does polygamy really benefit anyone? If yes, who? Our second guest, Isio Malawal, has the answer to this particular question and um, probably a few others. We meet her after the break. This is today with John and Helen once again, and it's been a pleasure so far. I've learned a lot. I hope you have. We'll take a break right about now. <laughs>